Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerdy here at Haywood RV of Coldwater, Michigan, and I'm not saying it's windy today, but I did see a house fall on a lady wearing a black hat who left behind some ruby slippers after that transaction had completed. This is the 6,550 pound Eagle 298, which the numbers mean nothing to you probably, but uh, it's a conventional rear living room. We got a pair of recliners in the back, nice spacious super slide. There's a bunch of accessories from the previous owner included with it, like you see the little hitch on the ground behind me. There's also a full RV cover and a bunch of other things. It looks like they're just basically done camping because this wasn't a trade. Uh, we actually purchased this outright from the uh, uh, previous owner. It's been used. Overall, I'm actually, it, it's in pretty good shape. There's a couple things we're going to point out along the way, but there's one, I think, potential major deal breaker item for you. I want to point out right up front. I want to let you know what it is, how it happened, and what we're doing about it. Okay, so she ain't perfect. It's more good than bad, but she ain't perfect. The obvious thing from here is you can see, <coughs> Pardon me, literally choking on the wind. Don't even know how that's possible, but I just did. Uh, you can see the awning fabric flapping there at the base. The fabric, good use replacement. The awning hardware, thankfully, is in good shape. We can always get you a quote on something like that. Now, the real significant item I wanted to showcase for you is right down here. If you look inside the front of this, it's had a leak. And I think, actually, at the time of this filming, it's still leaking. You can see how that's been uh, compromised here. Now this floor is still solid. That front panel there is a little bit soft, but you might notice it's localized over here. It doesn't really go over there. And it didn't take me real long, I think, to figure out what happened. This piece of trim with uh, years of weather exposure, it shrunk. Kind of like, you know, the way expansion bridges have those little gappy joints in them. And I just never had a touch-up bead put on. So obviously we're going to take care of that. Then what we're also going to do is put this on a seal tech machine, which if you're not familiar with what those are, what we do is we kind of cover the camper in soapy water. And then there's this attachment that actually like plugs into the door of the camper. Like you open the door and then it fills that slot. And we, we just pump air into the RV. We pressurize the internal cabin so that if there are any voids, which is a fancy way of saying leaks in a seal, then it will bubble outward, so we're not putting water into the RV, and we can find those, uh, address them as necessary. And I figure as long as we're out here, one other thing I wanted to mention is it's just cosmetic, but hey, if I see it, I'm gonna say something. There is a crease over here on that piece of skirt metal. It's not hurting anything. It's not the body of the RV. The lamination hasn't been scratched or damaged. I could only guess maybe they pulled up to the, uh, uh, I don't know, a gas station post a little bit too closely. That's just a theory though. And what's really interesting here, to me at least, you, you probably don't care, but a little history on this camper. So at the time this was made, Jayco had the J-Flight, and then they had the J-Flight G2, which was like the fancier series. And then they decided they wanted to make one with fiberglass, but they threw it under the Eagle name. So this is actually, interestingly, it has more in common with a J-Flight, and you could have called it the G3 generation, than it does with an Eagle from this generation, which is, I don't know, I think is interesting. Maybe you don't care. These are not the original factory chairs back here. They're frankly, probably much nicer than what was here originally. They are swivel. Uh, they do rock. You can see how they recline and they're free floating, which is kind of cool if you want to move them around. Now, compared to the original chairs, what's kind of cool about these, as long as you slide them back, you don't have to twist them to close the slide. And I will show you the RV with the slide closed and road mode in just a little bit here. All kinds of good window coverage in this. And uh, other than the little uh, sunlight, skylight kind of window in the entry door, they all open for airflow here. Now, this is the uh, old style hide a bed kind of air mattress sofa. There's a little storage drawer below that. What I will tell you about those is the mattresses that were in those when they were brand new, they were not good. Uh, I've yet to see a used RV uh, with that air bed style hide a bed whose mattress has stood the test of time. So my recommendation, if you are really looking for that to be a guest sleeper, probably need to spend, what, $15 uh, at you know the big box store of your choice, uh, supporting your local community, as it were, the best that you can, I suppose, in terms of a big box store, uh, to get a new mattress. Um, the TV here, <laughs> obviously made before the time of 40-inch flat screens and smart TVs and RVs, that is, though, I can tell you, the original factory television, because Jayco was one of the only ones that used uh, RCA hardware, which was just a much better option than what was typically found in the RV industry at that time. 
The uh, RV was obviously made during that kind of cherry sort of phase. And if we start looking through the kitchen here, overall, looks pretty good. That's a nice larger 22-inch oven. We got plywood drawers down to the floors over there. The uh, uh, microwave doesn't look used. The oven doesn't look like it was ever used. That's an eight cubic foot gas electric fridge freezer, by the way, which does look like it could maybe be, uh, it, it could use a wiping out. Now, the other thing that we were uh, looking at here is that like giant hallway closet over there. So this doesn't have a bedroom slide, but frankly, that hallway closet is bigger with more storage than any bedroom closet wardrobe slide I've ever seen. And that right there is something that Jayco trailers used to do quite a bit that I don't really see a lot today. That like extra large kind of vent fan right there. I think I've yet to meet somebody who wouldn't prefer one of those. Is there anybody out there who doesn't like the bigger fan, who prefers a smaller fan? I, I don't know. I've, I've never met any of them. Uh, porcelain foot flush stool there. You might have noticed how that bathroom countertop was cut away a little bit to give you a little more space in there, which is kind of cool. And this does have a six foot nine ceiling height in it. So if you're six four or shorter, you should be able to stand in there without your head being in the bubble. And then you've got a couple extra inches if you're even taller than the average bear. Now up here in the bedroom, it's simple, it's straightforward. There's nothing new to write home here. This is back when you still found almost exclusively Camp Queen beds and travel trailers. Although as you see, there is more than enough room to add a true queen here and still be able to walk around it. Storage below the bed, we kind of peeked at that a little bit outside. Then over here, you might be wondering, what is this mess of nonsense? That is the full RV cover included with this. And I actually noticed something I thought was pretty cool. Previous owner went through and cut out some little foam corner pieces to kind of round out the sharp edges so that if that cover ended up flapping in the breeze, it didn't end up getting torn up like a bowl of shredded wheat. Although, I don't think most people uh, younger than me have, have any clue that you used to actually shred the wheat for the cereal. <laughs> We're flipping ourselves around here a couple things. First of all, you see a couple little, I don't know, little coat hangers or something like that that they added up there. Also, they did add a nice TV up here with a uh, uh, pivoting swing arm so you can really crank it around and make it face the bed pretty nicely. And then, as you may have noticed, I took the liberty of closing up the slide to demonstrate the fact that this one has front to back road mode access. And with the way the bathroom door opens, we can clearly access the bath. I think this is one that truly qualifies very nicely as totally turtle friendly, dude. So again, we already covered a couple of the concern areas on the outside. What good does it have to bring for us? Overall, the decals and stuff look pretty good because it was stored under that cover that we saw on the inside. And again, down here, there's just a whole mess of random accessories and the original outside grill that was included with this RV that would actually mount on that little white rail that you see uh, over there. The uh, tires uh, are the, I believe, original Goodyear Marathons. They have a date code on them. Um, I think it was 1311. So uh, you may want to uh, plan your replacement tire purchase potentially accordingly if that's something that concerns you. Now, at the time this was made, there wasn't this big industry hullabaloo over is it four seasons or not which frankly i'm convinced very few people really understand what that means but this is what i think is a very successful extended season package jaco wasn't hot cold camp testing these at the time this was made it may be zero degree capable i just they haven't guaranteed it so i don't think it's appropriate for me to try to guarantee something like that now look it up on the roof the seals look aged what they are holding right now. You will see though that they are like kind of dry cracked, almost like um, the floor of a desert, I think is a way I can describe it that sort of makes sense. And here's what I think this RV needs. I think this RV needs just a good once over. I would personally, if I were purchasing this RV, I would perform a full peel and seal or have somebody perform a full peel and seal on that roof. Just because uh, it, it'll give you like uh, almost like a line in the sand where you have BC and AD time on that roof. I do like how they've got the roof vent covers over like the, the living room vent, the bathroom vent right there. But the seals, although they don't appear to be leaking currently, you give them, I bet if you gave it a, a full solid year or like two winter seasons here in the Midwest, uh, because especially if it's left outside without the cover with the, uh, the, the freeze and the thaw seasons, 
that stuff just plays havoc with roof ceiling, especially since it already has those cracks that it can get into. When that water gets in there, freezes, it expands, and it will just start blowing those seals apart. So again, hope you appreciate the, uh, the straightforward, no-nonsense way that we look at stuff. I want you to know what you're getting. I don't want to sucker you into something. When you come here, we're family-owned and operated. I want you leaving thinking, those folks, they really shot me straight. So thank you very much for hanging out with us. If you're still with me at this point in the video, it says either A, you're just here for the entertainment value, which you deserve better, <laughs> frankly, or for the right money, you might be interested. I'll leave you a link in the video description. You can see uh, you can she if if sees yeah, yep yep. You can see if she's still in stock. Uh, the the general going asking rate on it. Fill out a credit app. Whatever works for you. Give our team a call. We'd be happy to assist. And short of that. See you around next time. I hope you appreciate the fair way we go about things. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halo camping, everyone. Okay.